Welcome to the Grand Bowmaniac Beginner Programming Roadmap. This nice map shows you how I would approach learning to code if I was to start over. It's also the very path I recommend you use to land your first programming job. So if you're a beginner looking for that, then keep watching. We'll kick this off at the very top of the iceberg with Python. If you speak English, which you probably do, then this is the best place to start. Because Python code reads a lot like English. Like here's how to print something to the console with Python, compared to C++, much easier. I learned Python as part of a university course back in 2021 and 2022 and even though it was hard doing it all from home in my shoebox apartment i'm still grateful for the time and effort i put in because nowadays i use python almost every day because it's such a powerful tool learning python will also teach you fundamental programming concepts such as data types and algorithms to get started download python from the website and get yourself a nice code editor i use vs code which is free if you're completely new to programming you'll probably spend quite some time here hence the very long line going below sea level. Only the strong ones survive. And if that's you, then it's time to pick the next turn. The first path is going straight to the left here into web development. Because knowing how to make websites is pretty nice. They're a great way to impress anyone. Get started by learning HTML, which is a very simple programming language used to decide where to put text, images, and other elements on a web page. Here's a bonus tip for you. Since you'll be coming from Python, you can use a stupidly easy framework called Flask to create your website. Or another framework called Django, which is slightly harder. I personally created this and this using Flask and contributed to this Django project. Also, Flask is often the preferred choice when cooking up APIs at tech companies, so it's a good skill to have. But they're both good Python frameworks. To make your website look nice, you'll have to deploy some CSS, which was created to fix HTML and makes everything pretty. CSS is used to specify how things will look with regards to structure, colors, fonts, animations, and so on. There's a lot of fun to be had here, so be sure to spend some time becoming a CSS Chad before moving on to being a JavaScript junkie. JavaScript or JS is what makes the web interactive and fun. It's used to create most front-end logic on the internet and is probably the most used tool for web developers. It's also very easy to learn, I'd say. HTML and CSS decide how things look. JavaScript decides how things work. At my day job, I spent about 80% of my time writing JavaScript code and it's always good fun. Most recently, I was working on displaying time zones properly on a website that didn't do it right. And even that was fairly enjoyable. HTML, CSS and JavaScript together make up the basics of modern web development. I'd say all websites contain at least these three, so if you're interested in the web, then go down this path and do it in order at least at the start. Now remember that every language and tool is an iceberg with its own roadmap. Some people spend all day every day working with JavaScript, but they'll never know every single feature of the language. So the best way to land a job is to focus on a few things and get really good at those, while still understanding how everything else works at a conceptual level. Back to the roadmap, and let's proceed towards the JS Bro waters. But what is that? Oh, that is a subscribe button, which you should press for more videos like this one. There is also a notification bell there. Nice. Anyway, here in the JS Bro area, we have React, Vue, and TypeScript, which are all popular and common front-end frameworks you can work with. The map says to do React first, then Vue, and then TypeScript, but the order will depend on what you're looking to create. React is for building dynamic, high-performance user interfaces with plenty of interactive elements used to create the excellent Airbnb and WhatsApp web front-end interfaces. Vue is a good choice for building progressive web applications and small to medium-sized projects. Alibaba uses it for many of their e-commerce platforms and Grammarly for its web app interface. TypeScript is for large-scale applications, which adds static types to JavaScript and is used by the Microsoft Office web apps and the desktop version of Slack. Developers love these front-end tools, but I've never used any of them personally, so you'll have to find another YouTube video if you're particularly interested in these. Another personality you can adopt is a server programming geek over here. Node.js is an open source cross-platform back-end JavaScript environment, which is very popular these days. It's used to run script server-side, producing dynamic web page content before the page is sent to the user's web browser. It's used by Netflix and LinkedIn for their back-end. I've never worked with Node.js, so I can only recite what I've read about it. I have, however, worked with Django and PHP, Django at university, which I've already mentioned, and PHP at work. Django is a great great Python framework for building websites, and PHP, even though it's often turned into an internet meme, is still used by 76% of websites, so if you get good at that, you'll probably be in high demand. There is also the database path, which you can reach from the server programming corner, or just straight from Python. This is a great place to be, especially if you're interested in being the database guy. He sticks mostly to himself, but is still very popular. Every developer dabbles with databases at some point, and it's how most of the world's data is stored, so it's worth getting good at, or at least understanding 
understanding the fundamentals. This symbolizes all the different relational database languages like SQLite and PostgreSQL, and you'll have to pick the one that suits whatever thing you're trying to create for the day. A good start if you're not sure is SQLite 3 with Python. There is also MongoDB, which is an example of a document-oriented database program. It differs from traditional relational databases where everything is laid out in tables. Those have been around since the 70s and are tried and tested, but aren't always suitable for the needs of the modern day. Nowadays, the demand for web apps that can scale super fast is higher than ever, and document-oriented databases are often good for that. A relational database just couldn't keep up with having tens of millions of users performing thousands of transactions every minute. This need is what resulted in other modern database structures such as MongoDB, and it's good to at least have used it for a little bit, especially if you'd like to work for a big tech company. I don't, so I've only used it for a few things here and there, but I've quite liked it and you might too. And then finally on the database path we have the three major cloud services, used for things both big and small. If you visit any website these days, chances are it's running on one of these. Long gone are the days when servers used to be hosted in this guy's attic. I've never worked with these personally, but since they power most of the internet, it would probably be a good idea to acquire at least a basic understanding of how they work. I should too. Now down at the very depths are the inevitable. These are tools you'll have to deal with at some point in your developer career, whether you want to or not. First off is Git, which is the standard version controlling system, used to keep track of programming history, who's done what and when and so on. Every project with some significance uses Git, especially if you have multiple people working on it. I taught myself how to use Git at work, making many errors along the way. Out of all the tools on the map, this is the one I wish the computer science program would have brought up more, so it really is worth your time learning about it. If I could go back in time, I'd watch a couple videos about it just to get the ball rolling. Next is the terminal or the console or the CMD. Whatever you call it, we all have to use it. Now some people say that only peasants use GUIs and that real developers stick to the terminal, but I disagree. In fact, I'll only use it when I have to, and most often it's for running git commands or installing packages on Linux, regardless of how boring you might find it. Developers still have to use it daily, so get familiar with the basics as soon as you can. Expert developers swear by Linux, and as a user of all three major desktop operating systems, my experience is that it's better than Windows but worse than Mac. It's faster than this, but crashes more often than this. Regardless, it powers most servers, most embedded devices, and certainly many developers' personal computers. If you want to become a developer, you'll want to know Linux. The last entry in the inevitable is Docker, used to containerize applications, which is when we package up our app with all the parts it needs, such as libraries and dependencies, and ship it out as one package. I love Docker because it eliminates the it works on my machine nonsense. Containerization allows developers to be certain that the application will run on any other Linux machine, regardless of any customized local settings. I use it very often and you should try it too. And lastly, in this longer than usual Bowmaniac video, we have the niches. If you've got some special interest, or just happen to get a job as something random, such as an app developer, then you'll end up here. First off is Kotlin and Swift, used to build modern Android and iOS apps respectively. The app business is enormous these days, so it's not a bad place to be. Mobile apps are some of the best user experiences in 2024. So they're quite fun to make. I've not had a chance to develop anything major on mobile yet, but I'd love to one day. All I've built is this basic to-do app. Next is C++ and also Java, which are two of the most widely used languages. C++ powers most critical applications such as airplanes and rockets, most operating systems, and also video games. There is always a demand for this skill, so it's something you can consider. I've spent about six months developing C++, so I'm no expert, but since it's a low-level language, it did teach me how computers work on a deeper level. There is also Java, which the original Minecraft PC version is written in, but was later rewritten in C++ because it's better. Java is used in Android app development, enterprise environments, and also on the web. I started my programming journey with Java about a decade ago, making mods for Minecraft. I never got deep into it, but it was pretty fun. Over here are the two most used game engines used to make video games. They're C Sharp or C++ based, so you'll have to learn those too. Unity was used to make Hollow Knight, Pokemon Go, and the Monument Valley games, among many others. Unreal Engine powers Fortnite, The Outer Worlds, and Gears 5, just to name a few. Great places to be if you love video games, which you might do, because statistically, you probably subscribe because of this video. And finally, in the very corner of the bottom of the sea, is TensorFlow, an AI slash machine learning toolkit made by Google. This is meant to symbolize all modern ways of working with AI, not just TensorFlow. Even though we're probably in the world's biggest hype cycle ever, these are still good skills to have going forward, I think. I recommend recommend checking out the free courses on deeplearning.ai. They are fantastic evening projects. I'm not saying you have to go
go down one path at a time to completion. That would probably be pretty stupid. Instead, follow your heart or the demands of your local job market and acquire the skills that are the most relevant to you. For example, I'm currently in these locations on the map. Being a software developer is a forever game, so we'll never know anything or everything as I probably meant to put in the script. Anyway, the point is that as soon as we master one thing, there'll most certainly be a new shiny language, framework or toolkit in town. This has been the Bomaniac Beginner Roadmap. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe for more videos.